afternoon, viewers. Welcome to Maber Investments Limited's first virtually executed investor forum. Today, we hope to clarify any myths, have a discussion as to what it is and all the uncertainty surrounding COVID-19 in our economy today. Um, with me, I'm Tanya Waldron Gooden, Director of Investment Banking for Maber Investments Limited. With me are Mr. Um, Chris Berry and Mr. Gary Peart. Mr. Chris Berry is the chair, Executive Chairman for Maber Investments Limited, and Mr. Gary Peart is our Chief Executive Officer. We'll kick off the forum by asking Mr. Peart to introduce and give us his opening remarks. Over to Mr. Peart. Thank you, Tanya. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so excited that this is our first virtual forum. Um, COVID has come along, and it has changed the way we see life, in some instances for the better, in some instances for the worse. Um, but like all dynamic organizations, institutions, Mayberry has found a way to brand its forum, which is our way of having one of 10 parties every year with our customers. Unfortunately, we can't be with you today live and in person, but we have done the next best with our suppliers at Mystique, and we're happy that you're here today. So COVID, COVID has changed a lot of things, and today we're going to touch on some questions um, because we've realized that there are a lot of people that are concerned about investing, concerned about their investments, and we figured for our first virtual forum, we should try to answer some of those questions. So we encourage you during this session to put forward as many questions as you, as you can, and we'll try to answer as many of them as is possible, and try to prioritize as best that we can. But I hope you'll enjoy this journey with us today. We will try our best. Uh, my chairman, Christopher Berry, is here with us. Myself, Gary Peart, CEO of the organization, and Tanya Waldron will do our very best to help you enjoy yourselves with us today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Peart. So we'll kick off the discussion with Mr. Peart again. <laughs> <laughs> Recap of Mayberry activities prior to COVID-19. Can you lead us into what went on at Mayberry Investments Limited before leading up to COVID-19? Well, uh, COVID came about, the, I would argue, the third week in March, um, just before we finished our first quarter. So we continued to execute on our strategic objectives. We, we had several listings that we had in the pipeline. Um, we had Lumber Depot, which had gone, that, that went very well. That's a hardware up in, in, in Papine that it was over, oversubscribed again, as is the norm with most of our, our invest, IPOs. Uh, we had several other IPOs lined up. Unfortunately, COVID changed the market, so we've had to delay them a bit. We believe once the economy opens back up again, we should have a nice pipeline of activities there on the IPO side. We also are, are very large debt structures, um, and we had a couple fixed income um, debts, that, debt instruments that were put out there. And again, we're already seeing demand for more of those uh, going forward. So we're, ha we're having a pretty good first quarter um, until COVID came. Um, I think one of the first stock markets are leading indicators in countries across the world. And what we saw is that the stock market here in Jamaica got hammered, just like other stock markets in the world. Um, but at Mayberry, we teach diversification. A lot of our customers are diversified. So while it's unfortunate that the values in the market fell, um, this is a time where they were able now to rely on that diversification and focus on the other areas of their portfolio, which would be US dollars, Jamaican dollars, et cetera, private equity. So, you know, as a leading indicator, the market has fallen off. I think the message it was sending is that even though you might have good first quarters for a lot of companies, you don't need to look on the second quarter to see what is likely to happen. Um, we feel at Mayberry that as we, as, we in, as we go quarter to quarter, things will get a lot better. Also, for, the, for, the, for the, the country, it's a little bit different in the sense that we're now seeing, especially in the last couple of days, where the government has indicated that they have a task force for jobs. Um, they're, they're looking at the curfew extensions are not as long as they used to be. So there's a sense that we're going back into an opening of the economy. And we are at Mayberry, we're, we're happy to, to, to try and assist that process. Um, and as, as, as we go along, we think that there'll be 
a slow climb back to where we were prior to COVID. But like everything else, we're res resilient people, we're a resilient company, and we believe there is a, br a, bright and a bright future out there after COVID. All right, so we segue into, you mentioned the local economy. I'd like to segue into the in international economy and how it affects us. So my question is for Mr. Berry. How do you see the international economic impact on COVID affecting us locally? But before you answer, sir, I'd like to add something to what Mr. Peart said. He had mentioned that we executed Lumber Depot. Well, that was late 2019. We actually went through the window before COVID and executed another IPO, Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited, on March 10th, which is the same day Patient Zero was announced. So, Mr. Peart. Yes, so the question was, remind me. So it is, Mr. Peart mentioned the impact, or he, is, he touched on the impact on our local economy. But usually before we concentrate on the local economy, we want to know what's going on globally. So I'd touch a, a bit on the international market. So let's first talk about how the international market will impact on us here in Jamaica. And the first things which are very obvious would be tourism and remittances. So as all of you know by now, our tourism product is pretty much zero. And that's a big part of our economy. And that affects a lot of people, not just the hoteliers and the hotel workers, the taxi drivers, the, um, farmers. the farmers um, and all the Jamaicans that feed into that industry. And of course, remittances, which I always say, you know, remittance is our single biggest industry because, you know, it's over $2 billion and that's net, net, net. It doesn't really cost us anything. It's just Jamaicans sending home money to support their friends and family. And it's, it's really huge. I don't think the hit to remittance is going to be as bad in terms of percentage fall off because these are people's families and they're going to do their best to try and support them, especially in this tough time. Um, so those will be the two main things. On the international markets, it's been pretty crazy. We saw a huge pullback in the U.S. markets and pretty much the stock markets all over the world. And um, for the first time in my memory, um, we actually saw where the price of oil was negative, which if someone would have told me that could happen, <laughs> I would it's probably think nice. that they're crazy. <laughs> but um, that's pretty much where we are now. Um, I think, um, you know, as the summer comes along, people are going to be really suffering from cabin fever. And um, history tells us that flu really doesn't have a strong uh, effect during the summertime. So people will be a lot more optimistic. Globally, the governments are pumping out money and trying to get the economies restarted. And I think generally, people will be a lot more upbeat over the summer. Um, so I'm looking forward to the summer. Okay. Thank you, sir. So with that said, do you think all the, the efforts by our government is, is sufficient to sustain our economy, if you think it's sustainable in this time, Mr. Peart, our local economy? Well, um, they have put measures in place. Mm -hmm. But, but one of the things I think people need to understand, you know, Jamaica was recovering um, a debt to GDP of almost 150. Uh, we're going in the right direction below 100. Um, but your, a government's ability to respond is a function of the resources that it has. True. And, you know, we didn't, as I said, we are recovering, so we didn't have, we don't have a lot. Um, so obviously, you know, if we don't find a way to get the government's revenue back up and running. It's, it's, it's a wheel, it's a circle. 
um, then we could have we would have challenges. Um, one of the things you're already seeing is um, just to support Chris's point on the remittances. You're seeing where in, in, in more developed and richer countries like the United States, where they have put in place rescue packages, there are Jamaicans who are beneficiaries of that, and then they're using that to send back home money um, via remittances. You know, um, so at the end of the day, the, the, the question is, how do we find these resources? Are we going to go and borrow money internationally? That was my next Are question, we, sir. <laughs> uh, um, the Minister of Finance has indicated that he has, he has, he has made an application to the rapid assistance for the, from the IMF, etc. You know, so those things are going to be key in terms of bridging that gap until we can start to get the, the engine of the economy um, going again. And I think that is the biggest thing that we can do for ourselves. If we can find a way to manage the pandemic and trying to restart the, the, the engine of, 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 of industry, then that is your ideal way forward. But that is theoretical. The question is practically how do you yeah, do Yes, so the WHO had published a, a document last week, sometime last week, about a checklist for opening back economies. Yes. Do you think, your, your best estimate as to when you think we could reopen? Um, that's a very difficult question to answer because I am not aware of the facts. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know, I have to place reliance on you know, some of the public briefings. But notwithstanding that, the public briefings in a sense are kind of historical. They tell you what has happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not aware of the numbers that I could say, okay, based on what we're seeing, um, you know, it's likely to abate in a week or it's likely to abate in, in, in six months, you know. Um, so, you know, I understand that the pan it, we, have not been, we have not reached our peak as yet. You know, there are going to be more cases. Uh, what does that look like? I don't really know, you know. So it's, it's, it's very difficult to answer a, a question like that without information. The facts. Yes. Uh, segue into, we describe the economy, we know that COVID exists, we know that we're going to feel the impact for some time. Mm -hmm. um, jumping in now, what kind of advice, what advice do you have to current investors, whether fixed income, real estate, I'm, I'm just putting it out there and it's for both of you. Um, where, what, do you what kind of investment advice, and I know it's a difficult question too because then each investor has a different appetite. Yes. But I'd, I'd like you to try to answer that. Well, I mean, I can take a first hit at it. Mm -hmm. um, at Mayberry, we, as you know, we advise our, our customers to diversify their portfolios. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And this is one of the main reasons for that, because we know there are going to be shocks from, from time to time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we've seen is that the market has pulled back sharply. What we have found over a 30, 40 year history is that the stock market tends to outperform other markets. Um, but the stock market is probably the only market in the country where you see immediate impacts on values. Yeah. So the real estate market, it takes so a time before you know what is happening in the price. You, don't, you can't go one place to say, this is the price of property in Constant Spring versus the price of property up in Warsaw up in Trelawney. Mm -hmm. you know? um, but it, it's, gonna take, it's gonna take a hit, right? Um, so, when you look on the numbers from a company like Carib Cement that has just come out, mm -hmm. they've seen a 50% reduction in, 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 in their profits due to certain things. Yeah? It'll be interesting to see what the second quarter brings because that's going to be an example of what is happening in the construction sector. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, if we see a reduction in cement, then we're not, we're not going to be building more homes. Yeah? So in terms of what I would advise um, in investors right now in terms of my hierarchy, I mean, Obviously, because of the fallout in tourism, etc., cetera, um, you've seen the dollar under some pressure. So it'd be good to have some US dollars in your portfolio. Uh, we believe that as the market gets hammered, it, it will probably go a bit lower in the second quarter, but then look to trend back up. So the question is, you'd say to investors, you know, look out for certain key bargains. So for example, in my opinion, if you look on a company like Wigton, for example, um, you, we could argue that the demand for electricity has increased because everybody is at home and they're home for a longer period. Um, we saw where that stock fell to 50 cents. I mean, the intrinsic value is between 90 cents and a dollar. So it fell to 50 cents. The demand is still there. Wind is still blowing. It's still going to generate cash. 
So, I mean, that, that was like a 60 to 80 percent waiting for, for, for the thing waiting to happen. So, you have companies um, like that that you can uh, make that investment. It's, I would say, if you have to be, you, you would want to have some cash because, in a sense, as they say, cash is king. But we feel that, or I would recommend that having some cash to take advantage of bargains, whether it's going to be on the stock exchange, whether it's going to be in real estate, mm -hmm. is also going to be key. So that would be my, 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 my advice at this point in time. Mr. Berry, anything to add? Uh, well, you know, companies that perform well over time always seem to perform well over time. So, you know, we know which are the better run companies in Jamaica. Um, I think consumer staples will be less susceptible to fall off than some of the other types of companies. Um, you know, I think management, good management is key. Um, because we're in a time where we don't really have a lot of visibility of uh, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so people have to respond very quickly to what's happening and um, try to recover. And um, the great thing about Jamaica is that, you know, we have been to hell and back in the last 20 years a couple of times. Yeah. So we kind of know that rodeo. And um, I'm thinking the recovery is going to be much quicker than what we normally see um, because we have just developed a hell of a lot of resilience and ability to go through tough times. Okay, thank you. So with that said, you, you would not advise panic selling because what happened, one, one myth is that, oh, sell in times of trouble. Whoa, the stock market is down, it's time to sell. So this... You, you dismiss not that myth. Gary? Well, there's a view that you should buy when people are selling and sell when people are buying. Go follow the herd. You know, um, and, and we've, seen it, we've, we've, seen it, we've seen it played out. I, I give you the example of Wigtown. Eh? Um, the, the stock traded all the way up to a dollar, dollar ten, I think, at one point in time. And the demand at above a dollar was so huge, but yet still, when the market was sold down to 50 cents, nobody. there was really nobody there to buy. And as I said, the company has an intrinsic value of 90 cents, you know? And so we saw it trade down to 50, trades back up to 70 cents. Um, and, you know, it, it still has some, it, it, still has, it, it still has a way to go. So, but it comes back to what we teach at Mayberry, diversification. Because if you're diversified and you get hit with a shock, it, you, you, you then would not be forced into panic selling. Right, because you have a balanced portfolio. Um, but again, people can make mistakes. They can overbuy at a certain point in time. But to answer your question, no, it's, 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 it's not good to panic sell. But if you get behind why people want to sell, there's a belief that you know, people think, in a, in a sense, that it's going to get much worse. And sometimes when you have the herd and the herd is running, you, you, you forget that, hey, listen, you know, this too will Normals, pass. Normalcy will Normalcy come. will return yeah. at some point in mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form. And then when normalcy returns, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to deal with it. And I, I'll give you an example. We, we tend to focus on one side. In accounting, they talk about a double-sided entry, yes, yeah. right? So every debit, there's a credit. Mm -hmm. You know, so yes, we have, we, we have lost the tourism earnings. Yes, the remittances are down. But one of the things that happens is that demand also falls. So you're not, getting, you're not getting U.S. dollar revenue in one area, but you need to appreciate that the demand that would come from that area is also gone. And I, I give the example of, I remember the first time we had a fallout in bauxite, and people were all worried how oh, Jamaica is going to survive without the bauxite revenues. And then after we, after we lost those earnings, an interesting thing came about. People realized that the largest user of imported oil yes. was the bauxite plant. Yes. You know, so what scares people is that if you're going to earn $10 from bauxite and you're worried that you're going to lose the $10, what you might miss is that nine of that $10 was, was immediately spent on something else. So what you really should look at is your net position of one. Yeah. You know, so 
I'm not saying that losing the, the hotels closing, etc., is 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 not is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be quantified. Yes. Right. And I think a a a, a, a shrewd investor should quantify these different things, especially relative to their position, and then make a decision. Okay. Um, that leads me to another myth. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Is now the time to buy? Some say no, is not the time to buy at all. I just that was, we just talked about panic selling. Right. Is now the time to buy? Particularly, I want you to start with the stock market and, and, and work your way from there. Well, you know, what is interesting, what is interesting and sexy to a lot of people is to buy at the exact point the, the, the asset you can't turns. Time the bottom. And you can never ever time the bottom, okay. right? And because that's the case, you, you should always try to average into a position, yeah? And so you, you, you take bigger bites, the greater mm -hmm. your courage of conviction or the, or the quicker you can see things, yeah? So, you know, the chairman used an example to us at a company that COVID, what is happening with COVID last month is you're driving in fog. Yes. You can't see. So you have two choices. You pull over to the side of the road and stop or you continue try to drive blindly, yeah, you might drop off a cliff, yeah. you know? So where we are now, I think the fog is getting a little bit clearer, mm -hmm. so you can move a little bit slower, but it is still not fully there. I think we have, we, we have better, we, we're starting to see the projections and feeling a little bit better with the projections, yes. but we're not sure. So, you know, one of the good things I believe in Jamaica is that the number of people who have died from COVID in Jamaica seems abnormally low. Mm -hmm. Whether it is because of our spirits, the history of whatever it wants to be, it's abnormally low, which is good mm -hmm. relative to other, 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 other markets, etc. You know, and I think what that does is that if that holds, as you try to reopen the economy, yeah, people might get sick, but they recover. Mm -hmm. um, and and when, because the argument is that if enough people get sick, they will have the resilience yeah. to the thing, and then we can move past it. Yeah. Um, so those are certain things we've seen a little bit better, but there is still some fog. Where are you see FX? Where you see the US dollar? Um, both of both for you and Mr. Sure. Bill. They. I mean, what you see now, I think the, the last weighted average was about 143. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have that knee-jerk reaction initially, in the sense that um, you've lost a lot of earnings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you also have lost the demand, True. right? Um, you're buying U.S. to do what with? You Some know? people, sorry, don't mean to interrupt you, say that there's a hoarding going on of the U.S. dollar. Probably, um. probably, um, because, you know, as I said, you're, you're buying it because you, have, you, have, you, have, you potentially have overthought the process. Mm -hmm. But where the real risk is that the country has an NIR of 3 point billion. Mm -hmm. If ever there was a time to use the NIR, yes. If you, if you don't use it now, you can't, you, uh, yeah. I don't think you ever find a reason to use it, yes? And this is the reason for the NIR. It is a shock absorber. And the question is, you know, will the BOJ and or the government use it in, sporadically in, mm -hmm. in the right ways to temper, to temper, to temper yeah. the foreign exchange? But the fundamentals are, if your foreign exchange flows have, have slowed, it's going to have an impact on your balance of payments, which is probably why you might ask the IMF for some more assistance to get foreign exchange um, into, into, in, into our coffers to try and balance it out. Mr. Barry, anything to add? I don't have any visibility into exchange rate. Um, we don't really have any way of knowing what is up good or a bad exchange rate for Jamaica. I think um, that's really the job of the BOJ. All right, with that, thank you viewers for listening. Um, we wish to move into question and answers. Are we ready, guys? Um, any questions from the public? I have some questions here that were previously sent. Number one. From at Learn, Grow, Invest, they ask, what are some good diversification strategies now? Me, Chris? Dude. Chris, Barry. I was throwing it out there, sir. <laughs> I think the most important thing for investors right now is that they need to make sure they have enough cash on hand mm -hmm. because you really don't know what's going to happen. Um, 
don't wait until you need cash to have cash and um, know your buying and your selling points, right? So whenever you have a crisis, it's always a great time to pick up deals. But if you don't know what a deal is, you won't know you when won't. to buy. So you need to work that out in advance so that when the deals present themselves, you can take advantage of it. Anything to add, sir? No, I mean, um, cash is king. And you have to hold on to your cash and guard it jealously in an environment like this. Uh, you know, and there are going to be a lot of deals. There is no doubt in, in my mind. There are going to be a lot of deals in a lot of different ways because you do have a lot of people that don't have cash. And they're going to want to liquidate certain assets at below their true value to get cash. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you know, that's, that's very important. And you have to be very selective in how you go about spending that cash. You don't want to spend half the cash and then turn and then around turn and be the target again. You know, so. All right. The other question is uh, from at less underscore is... They ask, what lessons have we learned from previous financial crises? I think we touched on that, that we can apply to survive slash build wealth in our current situation. Chris? Well, I mean, from previous financial crises or this one? Mm. Previous. No, from previous. Lesson learned from previous that will guide us and through this crisis? Well, I think the main lesson I learned from previous financial crisis is that you, you have to really be, don't panic. You have to be calm. You have to know where value is so that you can step in and pick up value. Um, I don't know what you learned from COVID. It's like a black swan. Last time this happened was 100 years ago. Yeah. I don't know how you plan for something like that. Um, you know, I, I think it's kind of late now, but one of the things a lot of people like to do is put a lot of leverage on their portfolios. And I mean, this is a classic example of why you shouldn't be over leveraged. Um, but in the end, um, most people that know me know that I'm very partial to equities. And I've found time after time through these crises that you always make more money with equities than in debt securities. So for me, I I'm looking for bargains right now. Yeah, and historically, that's true. Anything? Yeah. Yeah, what I would add is that, you know, from a country perspective, I think the, the, the country has learned, um, you know, you now have a banking sector that's significantly more capitalized than in the past. I mean, that has come up over, over time. You have a securities dealer sector that is much more capitalized. And that's important for, for an economy and for a, a country like Jamaica, you know. So you, you've seen the recent move to ensure there is more liquidity in the, in, in, in the banking sector, you know, so people can access credit in this, in, in this, in this period. So I think that's an, important, that's an important improvement relative to prior, prior, prior crises. The communication is also important. And I think each financial institution is having a dialogue with their customers, and I think the customers realizing that there is support there has done a lot to help to reduce, reduce the panic, you know. Um, also, at a, at a country level, the fact that you have made the move quickly to an IMF, which further helps to increase the liquidity available to the country, uh, I think that is also a learning relative to historical um, crises where we might not have moved as quickly in the past, you know. But I, I think as individual investors, you know, you, you, you have to be proactive. There's, there's a, when, when these things happen, there's the urge to be an ostrich and just stick your head in the, the in the sand. And hopefully that when you lift it up, everything is going to change. No. That's the wait and see strategy. Right. Well, that, that, is, that, that is a wait and blind strategy. Blind, well, right? Yeah. 
But, you know, and, and I think now is the time. It doesn't matter the state of your finances. Now is the time to stand up straight, take a deep breath, relax yourself, calmly think about the, 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 the problem, and the solution will come to you. Then when the solution comes, execute that solution. You know? So I think over the next three to six months, financial advisory and financial advisors are going to be extremely important. And I think that's an area that Mayberry can assist a lot of its customers. You know, because you know, there are certain decisions that people think are simple and they're not. It can, learn, it can lead no, to, <laughs> there you go, it can lead to, to, to other situations. And that decision, what we find is that the majority of that decision is, do you borrow against the asset or do you sell the asset? Said, yeah. You know, because if you have an asset that's declining in value, if you borrow against it, it falls faster, you get then no, you have to pay about the loan as well. Yeah. You know, so yeah. those decisions you need an experienced advisor. Yeah, and it's not a cookie cutter approach approach, Correct. sorry. Because most of our some clients or prospects would think that, okay, you apply this to John Doe, you can apply it to Mary Correct. Jane, but that's not how it goes. You have to look at each company slash individual right. independently. Another question is now a good time to invest in private equity. I, again, I think it falls down to the same. I'm sorry, sir. What key fundamentals should I look for? I guess somebody wants some advice. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in this crisis, like every other crisis, it's cash flow. Mm. So once there, once there is cash flow in the private equity, and depending on what the values oh are, gosh. will determine whether you make the investment, yes or no, right? Um, so, you know, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Yeah, cash is king. Cash, no, not as cash is king, but you know, you don't want to invest in something that is going to decline in value without any cash. Because all you're doing, you're taking a burning tire off a man's head and putting it on your head. You know, so you do your analysis properly, but but ensure that analysis focuses very clearly on the cash flow. I, I, I like that you said that because in my experience. Um, individuals or corporates tend to confuse net profit. So yes, the company is profitable, but it might not have cash Correct. flow. flow. Correct. Right. So I just like to put that out there. Another question, in this time, how can I minimize my loss in the stock market? Do I sell or do I hold? Mr. Peart. Me? Yes. Oh. Again, it depends on the individual stock. So again, you know, one of the things we look for at Maybury is, you know, proper management, quality management, you know, experience management. Also, you know, a proper understanding of the numbers and the future of the business is, is going to be key. You know, so you can sell a stock at a loss if you actually see another stock that you could that. buy that is likely to rise faster than the stock that you're holding. So the circumstance is, 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 is going to be very important to make the decision. You know? So you know, depending on different scenarios, then you can give a specific answer to how you would deal with that scenario. From Instagram, Mr. Berry, what do you think about BOJ restricting dividend payments from financial holding companies? That's a question from Instagram. So from my perspective, I think BOJ has a much bigger picture of what's going on than I would have. And I'm sure their decision is based on that picture. From my perspective, I think it's a bit risky um, because Jamaica's problem, one of Jamaica's biggest problems is attracting investors. And I think once you start determining whether investors can get their dividends, which is why they're investing, then it's, it's kind of like a, a, a double jeopardy type of situation. So I can see how they're trying to protect the economy and the exchange rate by doing that. But at the same time, the downside is that investors looking on are going to say, am I going to invest in a country where I might not be able to remit my dividends? But as we said before, this is a black swan event. Once in 100 years, 
So people could say, hey, you know, it's an extraordinary time and it calls for extraordinary measures. So let's not consider this as a regular policy decision. So in closing, I would say, you know, the BOJ, they have the big picture. And in a crisis time like this, you really have to rely on them to make a call like that and have trust that they're making the right decision. All right. Thank you, sir. From Instagram again, Mr. Peart, what stocks would Mayberry recommend to potential investors to acquire when the fog lifts for those looking for tangibles? Well, when the fog lifts, then we'll have to make the analysis there. <laughs> You know, um, and, and it's actually a very serious question yes, in the sense that we, we do not know what is happening in a lot of companies. We genuinely just don't know. So companies that were doing very well before, you know, um, I, I give you an example. There, there's a particular company that nobody would ever believe they would ever be in a position to lay off people because of reduction in sales. And, and, and we're seeing that. Yeah. You know, we, what this COVID has done is a, it, has, it has created a scenario where people now fully understand what their funding looks like, right? So the farmer who is Mr. selling Burris, to the hotel... Like he has a burning question. <laughs> you know, no, no, sir? <laughs> the, farmer who is, the farmer who is selling to the hotel on the North Coast, right, has a baby mother in Old Harbour who buys from a location, a, a franchise in Old Harbor. So if you, if you thought that most of your sales was coming from, that from the people in Old Harbor, yeah. what this is showing is that the true, the true source of that sale is probably a farmer in St. Elizabeth. True. You know? So we have to look on this new information, as a, and we keep using the word when the fog lifts. Mm -hmm. And I think when the fog lifts, then you'll get a better feel as to what to do. That's why we earlier indicated you need to be careful what the deal is. Yes. You need to make sure you understand the, the elements deal. of a deal because you might buy too early and it's really not a deal. Correct. Um, it's, a, it's, another, it's an independent question, but what sector do you think will recover the fastest and which the slowest? Mr. Berry. So I think uh, consumer staple staples will probably recover the fastest. And in simple English, that means companies like um, Wisinko, Grace MDS. Kennedy, um, Lasco Distributors, Derriman, companies Paramount. like that. Um, but you know, other companies will also have the chance. I mean, food is, is like key, right? You have to buy food. Yeah. So that's very sure. Um. All right. Most of these questions are repetitive. But um, any the one slowest. more question. Any new viewpoints or improved opportunities in regards to cryptocurrencies? I mean, that are people looking more favorable towards it? Um, I don't think we're. No, I, I, I think I think I, I think at this point in time, you know, crypt, cryptos was on its way as an exotic um, alternative investment. Uh, but I think with COVID right now, everybody wants to get back to cash, <laughs> and you know, so again, it's an it's an investment, it's an alternative investment that you know is, is sounds very sexy to a lot of different people, uh, but it wasn't a, a very deep market, in my opinion. Um, so I think that is something that after the fog lifts and, you know, people get back to, people are going back to core. And so internationally, people want gold. They're holding on to certain currencies. Locally, that's the same thing. You know, people are holding some U.S. dollars. You know, so people are going to go back to plain vanilla. And then after things turn around and get going, then you'll probably see, come back to conversations about cryptos and all that. So I, I want to say something about cryptocurrencies. So I've done a lot of reading on cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. I've read uh, extensively on it. And my feeling is that it's, it's not prime time, right? So the main way to make money in cryptocurrencies is if you're a part of the industry, mm -hmm. 
that's building out the cryptocurrency infrastructure and you have something to sell to some other guy who is trying to come up on the food chain, um, it's definitely not mainstream no. and I don't recommend it. And I actually think that until the major governments of the world decide to back it, mm -hmm. it has no chance of succeeding. Right, let's go back locally. Sure. DOJ, <coughs> should, do you think they should lower policy rates? It's pretty low now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's approaching subterranean. You know, but, but you know, the, the question becomes how long COVID will, will be here for, or not even just COVID, COVID-related um, effects. As I indicated earlier, my interpretation, based on some of the moves I'm seeing the government make, suggests to me that there is going to be a big push over the next couple of months you know, to get things back up and running as close to normal as is possible, to the extent that that can be medically, that can be medically allowed. You know? So that's, that's the time. That, that, that's, that's, that's where we are with really. it. I understand. Mr. Berry, one question for you. I think this is from Instagram. What are your thoughts on the development of the local energy sector and the opportunities there for smart money? So the local energy sector has been steadily developing over the years. We have Wigton, and one of the things that people don't think about but is growing tremendously is um, installation of solar by private individuals and businesses. So to me, if you, any time that you can um, make a one-time investment in a renewable type of energy that will save you money is, is a good investment. I personally was an early adopter in, in, in solar when the return on investment was a bit longer than it is now. And um, I think I have benefited tremendously. And I think with interest rates being what they are now, the return on investment on, alter, on local energy is, is even much, much higher than it was then. Okay, anything? And Mayberry is the second largest shareholder of Wigton Wind Farm. Yes, sir. <laughs> anything, Mr. Peer? On that? I, I think Chris had covered most of it. I mean, as, as has been pointed out, we're a large investor in, in Wigton because we believe alternative energy. Is a, is a huge um, investment opportunity. I mean, as you probably remember when we were doing that IPO, mm -hmm. the Minister of Energy, um, Favor Williams, indicated that the government is moving to a position where they would want more alternative energy. Yes, in terms of the overall energy mix, yeah. they wanted alternative energy, whether hydro, um, wind, solar, whichever one it wants to be. Mm -hmm. So we see that as a, a, a big opportunity going forward and you know the government everybody is waiting for the government to come out with the next bid for 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 for, for wattage um, in, in in the country so we, we're, we're getting there and as Chris points out I mean more every day more and more houses are going solar yes. and once you can once you can manage to find the investment to start the process it, it, it it, it's free, you know, so when you get past that initial break-even, um, you're good to go. What's the typical payback period, especially on the private it, home side? The last time I priced That's my it, question. Yeah. the last time I priced solar, if you just do panels without, without batteries, it's like four years or less, which if you think of what interest rates are now, that's a pretty that's good pretty. deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, so um, I have no further questions from social media, so I'll ask Mr. Peer to, you have any closing remarks, and Mr. Berry, anything to say or add? I mean, the questions seem pretty comprehensive, but do you have anything to say yes, to our I, viewers? Yes, I would just encourage people to remain calm and um, remain safe, you know. Okay. Well, you know, thanks to you all for attending today. 
um, you know, it was good. It's it's good to always talk to our customers and potential customers, you know, because you can never stop investing. You can never stop helping people with financial solutions. So, you know, we've come to the end of our very first virtual forum. Um, the people have different views, but you know, we believe that COVID has changed, you know, many things. So probably going forward, we might have five virtual, five okay. um, live live with people, you know, and, you know, I want to thank the team that was able to put this together. But more importantly, I want to thank you, the viewers, because it would not have made any sense if you did not turn up. So we thank you for the support and we look forward to meeting with you next month again, whether in, hopefully, <laughs> ideally, live and in person, but obviously, if not, certainly by this medium. Thank you all for joining us today. And we look forward to meeting you in person. If you have any solutions that you think a Mayberry advisor can assist, please feel free and reach out to them. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you, viewers, for joining us. Thanks to the panel um, of experts at Mayberry Investments Limited. I'd like to leave you with one key point, that in times of volatility or um, uncertainty, there are still opportunities. Thank you all for joining us.